up in the sky. Look, it's captivating. It's energizing. It's Alliance's Heroes. Alliance's is the destination for entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, inventors, leaders, celebrities, and startups, where our heroes in business align. Now, here's your host flying in, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. So welcome to the Alliance's Hero Show. I'm so excited. We've got so much always going on here. And you know the only place to go is E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S dot com. So I've often thought about some of my family who's passed away, some friends that have passed away, and you know, a very difficult time when that happens. And I've had a loss where my father passed away. And it'd be nice to have it, him and ask him if, for advice, ask him things such as, you know, what was your favorite baseball team? What was your favorite type of food? Things that I'm obviously not able to ask. So you wonder with all the technology is, is there a solution to that, right? To be able to talk to someone who's not here and ask those questions. Is that possible? We're gonna find out today because we have with us Emil Jimenez. He is the founder of mindbank.ai. So Emil, let's go, let's start right off. Let's get right into it. I miss my dad. If uh, I miss my dad, I miss asking him questions, those things that I mentioned. Let's talk about your company, your product, and how that will change those things in the future. Thank you, thank you for having me, David. So MindBank AI is in essence a repository of your mind. And there's two points of value there. Point of value is while you're alive, we want to enhance your humanity, make you a better human being. When you pass, this data becomes inherited by your family. So think of it as, a, as like your bank. And think about what, what is the concept of a bank, right? It's a place where you store your money and either in a safe way, obviously, but also the, you, know, you can extract value from that money through the bank, through loans and other, and other schemes. But at the end of the day, it's your money and that gets inherited by your family. So it was very similar in terms of the, the collection of wealth, but this is wealth of knowledge. And you, you talk about your dad, but you know, my, our, my hypothesis is that your children know your story. Your grandchildren might not. And the, then the story starts getting diluted as the generations go on. And wouldn't it be amazing for your great, great grandkids to say, hey, grandpa, how did you start alliances? Right. And they, and they can hear your voice saying it because your daughter knows she, you know, she told the story. She knows how it all started um, and she's lived with you. So she knows that. But then that's that's the beauty of, of what we have today is that we're able to document this in a very engaging and way that is literally you. Right, and so our, our, you know, I like to say that what started as Daddy's Quest for Immortality became something much bigger for mankind. Because really what we don't want to do is harness AI's power to make us better human beings. And that's both mentally, physically, and emotionally. Uh, so that's, that's the product, and that's, like, that's the essence of the product. And um, you know, the way we have it now is that we create these dashboards of the mind. So we analyze your data for psycholinguistic properties. Um, and show you, you know, what the levels of anxiety you have or the level of emotions that you have. And if you see this, it's kind of like a nice data dashboard that you can see and, okay, why, if I talk about these subjects, I get this type of, this type of outcome. And you yourself can ask those questions and, and dive deeper into these issues. Now, is this, all, is this audio is it, is, or is it video too? Today, it's just audio. So it's, uh, it's literally like if you send a WhatsApp message to someone, Hi, you know, I started alliances like this, and you tell the story, you know, and you record that story. We then transcribe the speech to text. Both get stored in the database. The text gets analyzed for the psycholinguistic models, and the dashboard gets presented. And as you keep doing this, you keep learning and uncovering things about yourself. Do you see the future changing where it will be also video? Will that, yes. Would that be? Yes. Uh, video video is, in, is obviously something that we're looking at. And, the reason we are not diving too deep into that space yet is because we want to focus on audio for the sake of what is the representation of a digital twin. And if you think about it, if I tell you, you started with the story of your dad, what age do you remember your dad? Right, 
What day? What, what age was that? Like, if I tell you, think yeah. of a picture of your dad. What age is this? I would say uh, like sixty. Okay, and then I ask the same question to your daughter. What would she say? Uh, right. So that digital oh, representation sure. of you is sure. very. It depends on the viewer. So, who am I? Like, what video do we have? You know, and how, and that's why I like the voice because the voice doesn't change much over time. Right. Once you've right. developed your vocal cords in your, let's say, your early 20s, your, your voice pretty much stays the same, unless obviously there's some issues. But, and the other thing about voice, which is quite nice, is that there is a voice in your head. And you hear dad's voice. Right. right? You hear right. his voice right. telling you, guiding you, telling right. you stories. You, you know it's there. And we want to be able to capture that as much as possible. And because that's what we like to, I like to think of it as a spirit. And the spirit can live on your mobile, can live on your TV, in your car, going mm -hmm. home, you know, and that's, it's very non-formatic. As soon as you put a body to it, the perception changes. Right. right. So, so what are some of the, what are some of the questions that someone would <coughs> ask someone who's not around anymore? What do you see? What do you see? Because you, you've developed these questions, right, uh, uh, for people to answer. What are some of the top ones? When do you know you're in love? Or when did you know you were in love with mom? Something like this, right? Or um, what was your favorite food growing up? And then there's, you know, there's, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, usually it's the more philosophical ones, right? Um, what is what is happiness? How did you measure happiness? You know, what was the happiest moment of your life, for example? That was another one. Right, so these type of questions that you almost never ask your parents, if you think about it. Right. Like, when did you ever ask your parents, how do you know when you're in love? You know, like it's, you know, right, sure, it's something sure. that some, most people don't. And then you think about it, it's like, wow, I'd love to know their answer. So, you know, you, a lot of people know the story of, okay, how did you meet mom, right? This is a typical one and, and these things. But what we would try to do is build, we built these topics, right? That compose life as much as possible. So religion, work, family, um, love, things like that, right? to try to dive into it and you can choose out of there's a couple hundred questions there so you can choose which one pretty soon we're going to open it up so that users can ask your digital twin the question and then you answer it right so then I, your brother might know something that obviously is not on the platform tell me that story oh, okay. that you broke okay. your leg or something like okay. this right okay. um All and right. these type of these type of stories and that builds more let's say family specific questions and uh, as time goes by, what we do is we build these knowledge graphs around these topics. What is your idea about love, family, money, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And this builds the personality and the and the what's called the very personalized database for the AI to really learn from what makes you you. Right. Right. Right, because we can scrape a lot of data from Twitter and all kinds of stuff, but Twitter data is, and, and Facebook data is not the story of how you met your wife. Necessary. Right, 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 or the story of what do you think about love? Yeah. You know? So those really deep emotional questions that have a lot more value. Sure. We want to put into the mind bank. I mean, imagine if we had that now on, on on some of the, you know, founding fathers, right? Or the you know science most you know some of the scientists that have you know discovered the cure for different things. Yeah. To be able to ask them those questions. Or even if we had like Abraham Lincoln, right? exactly. Into why did you, you know, why did the, you do what you do? Right. How did you know to do? Like you know, right. all those and and the, all the people you mentioned, at least you know, there's a lot of documentation around their life, and they're lucky because they were Abraham Lincoln and the forefathers, so they wrote things down, they kept journals, you know, right. But the vast majority of society was not. Right. Or what about the secretary to, to <laughs> exactly. someone who said, yeah. let me tell you really what happened, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and, and ultimately, if you think about it, it is, it is this wealth of knowledge that gets lost, right? right. Lost in, in, in the history, in the art and chronicles of history, as we say. Um, but when you come down to the core and our core audiences, okay, how do I learn about myself and build this repository of my life for, for my family? Right, is that two-sided benefit? It's one is the benefit for me today, right? Which is self-awareness, self-reflection, self-care. What is the benefit of this technology for my family? Access to me, even if I'm not around. Right. And lessons learned. And again, we're talking with Emil Jimenez. 
He is the founder of MindBank.ai, creating your digital twin. Because you're watching, listening me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. Make sure that you go to alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S dot com. So, you know, and, and what you're creating and doing is, 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 is truly amazing. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, to be able to have this. Even I'm thinking like, um, you know, the, those lessons or uh, athletes who want to share with their children, right? Specifically with their children. Hey, here's how, you know, I was able to do what I was able to do. Here's the things you're going to run into that they don't want the, you know, others to know about. Um, but the children, they want them to know about. And it just... Uh, it's got a lot of incredible, yeah. incredible uses for yeah. it. And one other use case from that, on that line of thought is, yeah. you know, how many divorced parents are there that don't have that time with their children? Right. So they can at least have a place where they can say, okay, at least my life story, my teachings, you know, my child will have more access to me at, at a certain point in time. I don't, and so it's a bit like, you know, making up for lost time as well. So there's, there's multiple use cases. Ultimately, it is about, human right how do we make this how do i pour my soul into this platform so that my so that these my children and and it could be a health provider have access to it and extract value from it yeah there was this guy on uh, uh online or something he found out he had cancer terminal and what he was doing is, is he was writing a letter that would be mailed each day to his uh, child in regards to a lesson or that and i'm thinking boy if he had had this and then to be able to hear his father's voice and and uh, and be able to answer some of those questions. Yeah. I mean, you're preserving. It's basically you're preserving the thoughts of people. Exactly. It's yeah. the mind bank. Mind <laughs> it's just bank. Like you preserve the money, you preserve the thought. So um, when you came up with this idea on that, how do you even go about like developing it? Like where do you where do you even start? Great idea, but I mean, it seems like a giant hill to climb to start. Yeah, and that, and that took about nine months for us to even incorporate. From the moment I had the idea until we incorporated, it was about eight months. Wow. Exactly. And those eight months, it was um, speaking to a lot of people much smarter than myself. <laughs> it's really, I just knocked on doors, as you, everyone you can imagine, and, um, and, you know, I'm a very personal person, so I always... I don't, you know, I don't mind saying, oh, this guy's an expert in AI. He looks like he built Apple. And he, you know, I literally, my first, my first email was to a gentleman who ended up being in one of our advisors, and he's a lead engineer that built Siri, like how this whole idea kind of started, this interaction with Siri and my daughter. I was like, oh, this looks like an interesting gentleman. He might know a thing or two about <laughs> what I want to build. So I just send him an email, hey, I'm building this thing. It's my idea. What do you think? Can, you, can I pick your brain? Literally, that's what I said. Um, and he responded you know, a day later, we had a call and became friends and built this friendship. And obviously then my next question to him was, who else should I meet? Introduce me to another person. Then I kept doing this, passing the baton, you know, passing a meal across wow. the world here. Wow, that's and, and anyone I met, I was like, hey, this is what I'm working on. Um, and I think that's something important to, to a lesson that I would like to, to share with the Alliances member. And I mentioned to one of the younger people at the event yesterday, um, I don't believe in putting your company on stealth, meaning you should actually share what you're working on for two reasons. One, no one is going to have as much passion as you, unless if you're really passionate about it, so don't be afraid of, you know, because you're going to work them. Two, um, they'll make the idea better. By you sharing it and getting feedback, I got constant feedback on what I needed to tweak in my concept. Right, and how do I need to tweak it? Because originally it started as this, okay, this repository for, for my soul, my ID, my consciousness, let's call it, for my daughter, but then it was too much focused on the death side and on the future, and the value of it became aware, very clear to me that it's actually very valuable to me today, this data, because I can, I can understand myself and build a dashboard of my mind, literally. And I was like, wow, that's cool. We have dashboards for our cars, our computer, our websites, all these things, you know, but not for us. Right, right, right. I was like, right. this is a brilliant way for us to embrace the technology and understand ourselves and become a better human being. Uh, so that's how it happened. And just talking to so many people. Right. And, wow. Yeah. 
Well, you flew in a, a far way, in fact. I uh, want to share, where did you fly in from? I flew in from Prague, Czech Republic, where we have some of our operations, yeah. To Scottsdale, Arizona, to come and attend the Alliance's Grand Table. So, Emil, share with us how you felt about uh, the Grand Table experience, what it meant to you to be there, and to be able to interact with many that are part of the community. Yeah, it was an excellent experience. I, I commend the entire team for what they've done. Um, it was it was above and beyond my expectations for sure. Um, the first thing that I noticed very much was the level of positivity that was in the room. And if you think about it, in a world of such negativity, look at the news and society. Everything is you know death cells, right? And everyone is you know doom and gloom all the time. But then you go into a room where it's I'm unstoppable. Right, that was the theme, and um, and that's like that's a great, you know, you, you build these mental frameworks for people to think that they're unstoppable, and that's so necessary, right? Um, I also noticed how you were talking about the writing. That's also extremely necessary. Although we live in a world of digital, the physicality of writing something down has weight, right? And it's and it's not going to disappear and get deleted that easily. So that's also some quite important that I, I try to instill in my children. And, and lastly, that um, the building mind bank, one thing I've discovered is words make us who we are, right? There's, you know, there's a reason like why you can know the person by what they say, really interesting. So if you build words and the build this mental framework of I'm unstoppable, I can do this, I don't give up, you build mental toughness, mental strength, and resilience, which is something that is not being taught very much, right? I had, the, I had the, the, the the luck, let's say, of being born with a teacher as a mother and a wow. general as a father. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so, that, so there's a lot of discipline in the house, and 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 we were like, obviously education was a top priority. But one thing I've realized as I've aged is, and it's something that I think had been just subconsciously with my family is that we're very mission-driven kind of people, that when we put our minds to something, it's like, we're gonna do it, right? Fire, through hell, through everything in between. This is what we want and we'll get it done. And failure is not an option when it comes to these things. So when you have that kind of mentality, and, and, and I'm trying to instill that into my children um, in the best way possible, I think you know that that's a good thing. And in your program, and the way you started it, and the, the positivity was great. Thank you, thank you. Well, we're honored to have you come, certainly, and be there. And uh, certainly, a lot of people wanted to talk to you. You had a lot of people; they were chatting the whole time around about what you've got. And, and so, again, very honored to have you there. So, where can uh, our listeners and viewers go? Do they go download an app, or how does it take place? Yeah, they can simply just go to uh, their app store, either Google Play or iOS, and just type in Mind Bank Space AI. We should pop up. The first one there um, and you'll see AI personal digital twin download it uh, download the free version I will share with the team at alliances a coupon code of some sort so that you can all get a one-year subscription for free for alliances members. Uh, excellent excellent and we'll be sharing that with the community and again we've had with us today Emil Jimenez CEO founder of MindBank you can reach him at mindbank.com because you've been listening watching me that's right and we've got a little bit more here that we want to ask from some of our listeners and, and viewers out there to, to make the shift to be able to reach out to people that you don't know. You mentioned, like, for example, you know, the, one of the creators of Siri and that. Um, how do you find that and make that move to do that? Like, how, you know, where do you even like, start? Because most yeah. people are shy. They're okay. like, you know, all right, yeah. do I really want to do that? They're probably going to say no. Do I, you know, and that's they, so... They, they said no a lot to me. <laughs> right. Right. A lot of people didn't even answer. Let's put it this way. Okay. Um, but most people would have given up and stopped them. <clears throat> uh, that's the back to the mission-driven type of mentality. Um, you, I, I know that the person who said yes was, was obviously genuinely interested in talking to me and understanding the story. And hearing what I have to say, and because it is a, a compelling idea, a compelling story, uh, so you just have to put yourself out there. You know, think that you know you, you're going to get a thousand no's, but that one yes can change your life. Right, right, right. And it's just being persistent. Persistence. I have a motto in my in my family: it's passion, power, persistence, and peace. For peace. I love it. 
Well, again, thank you to Emil Jimenez, who again, flew out here to come to the grand table, to come do this interview, to share with you something so valuable. He is the CEO and founder of mindbank.ai, creating your digital twin. Make sure that you go to the app store or mindbank.ai because you've been watching, listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. So you know where to go, Alliances, the only place where entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs align. align.